Let's take a look at another example. And this example is really good because we're able to tie our physical system to all these ideas we've been talking about. As always, I would encourage you all to pause the video and try the example first for yourselves. So in this example, we have some system which is shown below, and we want to find J and D values such that our percent overshoot is 20% and our settling time T sub S is two seconds for a step input of torque T of T. And so we see we have a rotational mechanical system. We have a torque which is spinning in one direction, and then we have our angular position theta, which we're keeping track of. We are given information for our spring. We know we have K equals five, but we don't have any information for our inertia or for our viscous damper. So that's what we're trying to figure out. What J and D values do we need to get our desired percent overshoot and our desired settling time? So the first thing that we wanna do is figure out what transfer function equation we have for this system. So we're going back to our, our, our sort of work that we did in our second unit with modeling in the frequency domain. So essentially we're gonna use our impedances of these components. We only have one degree of freedom, so we're gonna have one equation. So we have J times S squared plus D times S plus K, all of that multiplied by our theta, which is a function of S, and equal to the applied torque, which is T of S. So if we want our transfer function, so our theta, our angular position, is our output, our torque is our input, so we can then say our transfer function G of S is equal to that angular position divided by our torque. And making a minor adjustment, of course, we can just divide that over. We have one over JS squared plus DS plus K. Well, I'm gonna go ahead and divide out the J so that we have S squared for our first term here. And the reason I'm doing that is so we can more easily compare to our general equation form that we saw previously. So now we have D divided by J times S plus k divided by j is our constant term in the denominator. And then in the numerator, we have one divided by j. Okay, so this is our transfer function. So this is a good starting point. And so in the other examples, we kind of just started with something like this straight away. But again, I like this example because we're connecting these ideas back to our physical system. Okay, so now what we wanna do is we wanna compare this, our transfer function, to the general equation that we've seen before. And so you can see that on page 3-10 in the notes, um, but essentially we're trying to relate this to our omega and our zeta values. And so we, we know that this term right here is our omega n squared. So we can say that our omega n is then equal to the square root of k divided by j. And again, notice we don't have unity gain, so we wanna be careful to use that term from the denominator and not from the numerator. Now, the term in the middle of the denominator, this is related to our omega and our zeta, so we can say that two zeta omega n is equal to d over j. And so again, that's just direct comparison of this transfer function shown here and the general equation that we've worked with before. All right, so now we wanna go back to what we're looking for, a settling time of two and a percent overshoot of 20. So we could start with either place, but let's start with the settling time of two. So we know we want TS equal to two. And in general, we said that we can approximate our settling time as four divided by zeta times omega n. Well, we then know from this that our zeta omega n has to be equal to two. So we can plug that into this equation. So we can say that D over J which is equal to two zeta omega n, has to be equal to two times two, which is equal to four. And so let's call that equation one. So now let's look at our other specification, which is our percent overshoot. So remember with percent overshoot, the only thing that depends on is the damping ratio zeta. So we can find our damping ratio from our desired percent overshoot using an equation that we had been given previously. So in the numerator, we have negative natural log of 20 divided by 100, where this 20 is our desired percent overshoot. In the denominator, we have the square root of pi squared plus natural log squared of 20 divided by 100. Again, the 20 is our desired percent overshoot. 
plugging that in, we get that our damping ratio is approximately 0.456. Okay, well, let's keep in mind up here, we found that zeta times omega n is two. Now that we know zeta, we can find omega n. So we can say zeta omega n equals two, and knowing that our zeta is 0.456 is going to give us an omega n of approximately 4.386 radians per second. So now that we know our omega n, we can come back to this equation and relate that to our k and j. So we can say k divided by j is equal to omega n squared. So just slightly adjusted that equation from that we had written previously. And so that's approximately this 4.386 squared which gives us about 19.241. Let's call that equation two. And so now we go back to what we were given in the problem and we see, as we stated earlier, we're given information about our spring. So we know that K is equal to five. So looking at our two equations, one and two, we see that we don't know D, we don't know J, we don't know J, but we do know K. So what we're gonna do now is kind of sort of work in reverse. So from equation two, we can find our K value, or we know our K, we can find our J, and then once we know J, we can come back up to equation one and find our D value. So let's go ahead and do that. So let's say knowing K equals five, we can plug that into two to find that J. So let's say using equation two, we can find that j is k divided by omega n squared, which is approximately five, divided by the 19.241, and we get approximately 0 0.260 kilograms meter squared. And so I'll note that I'm using stored values when I've calculated this j and this d term. So now that we know the j, we can plug the j into equation one. So plug J into our equation one, which let me scroll up briefly. So we see our equation one is relating D and J. So from that, we can say D is equal to four times J. So that is approximately four times 0 0.260. And we get that D is approximately 1.039. And the units of that are Newton meter seconds per radian. And that's what we were looking for. So one other thing to note too, is instead of going through this analysis, what we could have done is we could have set up the system in a lab, for instance, and we could have measured the characteristics. So we could have measured our percent overshoot, our rise time, our settling time, our, our peak time. Now, depending on the setup, this might be a little bit difficult to measure. And I'm not as used to dealing with mechanical systems in the laboratory, so you might need some special equipment to be able to measure it accurately. But for instance, if we're looking at percent overshoot, we put a unit, a unit torque input, a step unit input, so we turn it a certain distance and we see how far it goes past that final distance um, and we could calculate from that our percent overshoot. Similar ideas for our TR, our TS, and our TP. Once we know all that information, remember we can relate that to our poles. So we talked about that in the previous video. And then once we know our poles, of course, we have uh, the denominator of our transfer function. So then we could come back and we could do all of our analysis on paper as well.